In this video, I'm going to be showing you the strategy I use to solo complete the Black Ops 4 Zombies Gauntlet Super Blood Wolf Moon. Now this is a completion guide and not a speedrun, so if you're looking for a way to complete this gauntlet as fast as possible, this video probably won't be of any help. Before we start, here's a loadout that I would recommend. For elixirs, the most helpful ones are anywhere but here, equipment, and temporal gift. For perks, the most important one is Mule Kick, but I also ran with Dying Wish, Victorious Tortoise, and Widow's Whale, which recently had a huge buff. I use the hammer as my specialist, Wraithfire for equipment, and the Mog 12 is my starting weapon. So as soon as you jump in, the first challenge is to activate the Sentinel Artifact before the end of the round. If you knife and kill all zombies but one, you should have enough points to reach the artifact. Once activated, go ahead and grab the shield piece around that area, as well as the candlestick for silver bullets. For the second challenge, you must get a kill with three unique weapons. First, I would recommend finding the purple stone somewhere in the master bedroom area and get the kills there so you can charge it up. For the three kills, you can use your Mog, your Melee, and then your Wraithfire. I like to buy the Strife during this round and use its Stiletto Knife for the next three rounds to gain more points. For the third challenge, you must sink all the billiard balls. During the round, go ahead and open up into the library, grab the second shield piece, and fill the green stone with zombie souls. You can also go around and knife out all six candles to start the Savage Impaler Easter Egg, which will be needed later. After that, save a zombie at the end of the round, and use the strife to sink all the billiard balls. It doesn't matter what goes where, just try to shoot them in order starting from 1 to 9. Most of the time, this will give you a zombie's cash power-up. For the fourth challenge, all barricades must be in place by the end of the round. Now during the round, go ahead and open up into the wine cellar and fill the blue stone. After that, save a zombie at the end of the round. You'll have to now rebuild six barriers. You can find two barriers in the east gallery, one in the music room, one in the smoking room, one in the tea room, and then one in the west gallery. What I did was I ran away from the zombie, then kept my back to it as it was coming up on me while I rebuilt the barriers. At this point in your game, you should have enough points to open up the dining room to collect the third shield piece so you can use that to protect your back. Just be sure not to trap yourself when rebuilding the barriers. For the fifth challenge, you can only use unpack a bunch of pistols. I like to use the strife, but you can also use the shields gun. During this round, you should also work on feeding any remaining pack punch stones if they aren't already done. You should have enough points to open up pretty much all of the map, so go ahead and complete each of their tasks as well. At this point in my game, I was able to collect everything to craft silver bullets and open up the forest. You can easily kill the werewolf inside with the shields gun. For the sixth challenge, weapons can only be used while prone. What I do during this round is interact with this tombstone in the forest to start the next step for the Savage Impaler. This will give you a sort of zombie blood vision, and now you must find a ghost somewhere in the mansion. As you escort her to the mausoleum, she will kill any zombies that get in the way, so you shouldn't have to worry about going prone to kill them. If you run out of the vision that allows you to see her, you can get it back again by going to that tombstone. After she reaches the mausoleum, you should then go prone and kill one of the glowing zombies with a regular weapon, then go prone and kill the next one with either the fire trap or wraith fire. This will give you two of the four items you need for the next Savage Impaler step. For the seventh challenge, you must survive a round in the dining room while avoiding friendly fire. If you're playing solo, the game will spawn three bots that you have to try and avoid shooting. If you end up damaging one enough to down it, you'll get a strike. The bots will also be able to shoot and harm you, but they most likely won't down you. If you do go down during this round, you will not receive a strike because you could potentially get revived. For the eighth challenge, you can only use the Bowie knife, which is located out in the forest terrace. During this round, you'll start to gain a lot of points, but you'll want to try and save them if you can help it. At the end of the round, save a zombie and find the four symbols needed to open up the Alistair's Folly case. For the ninth challenge, you must survive a round of werewolves. There will be a total of five, and what I like to do is use Alistair's Folly to kill three of them, then kill the fourth with my Mog that has silver bullets. This will drop its chaos material. With one werewolf left, go ahead and shield bash the bookcase in the library to pick up the second part for the chaos theory, which you can then craft in the greenhouse. You can also begin working on getting the branch for the steak knife. You'll need vampire kills to finish it, so you'll have to do that in a later round. For the tenth challenge, you must survive a round in the billiards room. This can be a tight place to survive, so I would recommend using your Chaos Theory, Wraithfire, and Specialist whenever available. You should also be picking up that yellow bile from vampires. You get that by killing them with a tornado shot from the Chaos Theory. For the 11th challenge, you can only move less than 100 meters for the entire round. I like to camp on the top level of the library with my back to this window using the chaos theory to pick off zombies as they come. You also have your specialist, shield, and wraithfire. The numbers below your player icon will let you know how many meters you've already moved. For the 12th challenge, all players must possess a Pack-a-Punch Koshka by the end of the round, and you can find its wall by in the forest. Now the weapon alone costs 4,500 points, which will then have to be upgraded for 5,000, so this is why you want to try and save up as many points as you can. After that, head over to the mausoleum to finish up getting kills for the Savage Impaler. 
healer. You should only need a specialist kill and then a shield kill to get the remaining two items. For the 13th challenge, you must get 25 kills with the steak knife. Now at the beginning of this round, you'll have an increased amount of vampire spawns so you can quickly charge the branch up if it's not already done. One thing you could do is run around a bit so the vampires can all spawn, then pull out your specialist near the branch so it collects their souls as well as respawns them. From there, you can kill more vampires with your specialist or you can shoot a tornado shot so you have a little more protection. When the branch starts to smoke, go ahead and pick it up, then bring it over to its workbench to craft the steak knife. After you get the 25 kills, try and get those remaining items needed from the ghost lady if you haven't yet. For the 14th challenge, zombies will only appear when you're shooting. I spent this round in the library and kept firing a tornado shot while also firing some single shots here and there. You can also kill a decent amount of zombies by throwing down wraith fire as well as using your specialist. For the 15th challenge, you must survive a round in the greenhouse laboratory. Again, use the chaos theory to survive by the area's fast travel. For the 16th challenge, you can only use unpack a punch tactical rifles. I recommend using the swordfish which is located in the dining room. From there, go ahead and run trains in the main hall and buy more ammo when you need to. For the 17th challenge, kills will drain points and damage and death points are disabled. Before you start to lose your points, I would recommend buying your perks if you don't already have them. Now it's on this round that I usually get the Savage Impaler. What you can do is spawn the Crimson Vampire by giving it the bile you collected which will then spawn a ton of other vampires. Bring them to the mausoleum circles where you should have placed down those four items and kill the vampires with your specialist. Also, don't forget to pick up the chaos material that the red vampire drops. Once all the circles go from white to blue, interact with the crypt to the right of the stairs when exiting from the mausoleum and pick up the savage impaler. For the 18th challenge, at least one player must possess the savage impaler by the end of the round. If you don't have it yet, go ahead and finish that up now. During this round, you should also get all the pieces to upgrade the chaos theory. One from the red vampire, which you should already have, then the part from the piles in the forest and the one for the mausoleum lights. I would recommend saving a zombie at the end of the round to do that last one. Upgrading to Alistair's Annihilator isn't a requirement, but it will make things a lot easier. For the 19th challenge, you must stay close to the ghost or you will start to slowly take damage. Simply follow the ghost as she travels around the map, killing zombies with your Impaler, Chaos Theory, and Wraithfire along the way. When she reaches her destination, you'll have to go find her again and repeat that whole thing until you've ended the round. For the 20th challenge, you must survive a round in the wine cellar. Just like every other defense challenge, use your specialist and chaos theory. For the 21st challenge, your vision will become more and more blurry depending on how many perks you have. At this point in your game, you'll probably have all of your perks, but even then it's still not that hard to see. I spent this round in the main hall using my Wraithfire, Specialist, and Chaos Theory. For the 22nd challenge, all weapons will have only one clip of ammo no matter how much you get or buy. Now, although you'll have very little shots for each one, you can still use your Specialist, Wraithfire, your Shield, and also traps. If you can help it, I would try and spare as much ammo as you can for your Chaos Theory. I I was able to use the Savage Impaler and Swordfish to finish the round. For the 23rd challenge, Vampire Bites will slowly kill you. If you do get bit, try and end the round as soon as possible. I normally run around with my shield out for some extra protection from Victoria's Tortoise. You should be fine as long as you don't look at any of the red vampires which might make them jump on you. If you wanted to play it safe, you could even camp at the shield workbench and do that strategy. For the 24th challenge, you can only use Unpack Punch Sniper Rifles. I would recommend buying the Kashka from the forest and spending the round in the main hall. Really, the only thing you can do is aim for headshots and it would probably be a good idea to give it silver bullets. For the 25th challenge, you must survive a round at the mausoleum. If you still haven't gotten a max ammo in the last few rounds, just keep running around and using Wraithfire and your specialist. For the 26th challenge, your active perks are randomly replaced and perk alters will be disabled. This isn't really that difficult, so just survive like normal. During the round, if you haven't already, acquire whatever parts you still need to craft Alistair's Annihilator. You can also go ahead and buy the ICR as your second weapon. Now when the round ends, your perks will change back to what you originally had. This is why you want to make sure Alistair's Annihilator is not your mule kick weapon so when you lose the perk you won't lose the gun. For the 27th challenge you must survive a round with increased vampire spawns. I spent this round in the main hall with Alistair's Annihilator. At the end of the round go ahead and buy the auger from the mausoleum as your mule kick weapon. For the 28th challenge you must have less than 1000 points at the end of the round. So survive like normal then when you have one zombie left go ahead and upgrade the ICR as much as you can. After that buy a shield then repeatedly buy silver bullets for the ICR until you can't afford it. From there you can use fast travels to drop your points even further. For the 29th challenge, you must possess the auger and ICR by the end of the round. At this point, you should have both as well as Alistair's Annihilator. Again, I spent this round in the main hall. If you can help it, try to save Alistair's Annihilator ammo and just use the ICR. At the end of the round, buy a new shield if you need one. And for the final challenge, you must survive a round in the main hall. Since you still have Alistair's Annihilator, this won't be difficult if you just keep on spamming shots. Once you've killed everything, the game will 
end and you will have completed the gauntlet. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any questions, go ahead and comment them down below and I will be sure to help in any way that I can. Also, don't forget to check out some of the helpful guides and timestamps in the description. Anyway, I wish you luck and I will see you later.